so guys welcome to leaves and lungs so finally we have reached the pinnacle of plant breeding that is the most important topic when it comes to breeding in plants that is ploidy breeding so guys i hope each and every one who listens to this video keep your ears clean for each and every word and each and every sentences that is being spelled because it is going to be like one hell of a confusion ride okay so if you just miss the concept you're going to miss the entire plot so please be focused on what you hear okay so we'll just go into the topic proper right away so guys before going into the mainstream topic you just need to brush your basics alone so you know that there are like two kind of divisions that has been taking place inside the cell one is mitotic division another is meiotic divisions so you know that these divisions are like very much precise that is they are like a very much precise like in the number of in the manner of the number of division that should takes place and the type of division that should takes place the time of division that is going to takes place so all these divisions are like very well meticulously planned and this gives rise to the stability of the organisms okay so this precision actually determines the stability of the organisms so thus maintains the chromosome number of the different species as stable so this is the reason of their stability but in very very few frequencies or very few cases there's been like alterations or irregularities that has been happening in both mitotic as well as meiotic divisions so this alteration or this irregularities can give rise to individuals with chromosome numbers different from their normal somatic chromosome number of the concerned species so this is the principle that is underlying the ploidy breeding so this is like uh, so this is like a double edged sword that is the alteration can give rise to a superior crop greatly involved in the crop evolution and it can be used in plant breeding and sometimes it can be formed as a lethal crop also resulting in the death of the species so this is always like a double edged sword you don't know the benefits as well as you don't know the harmful effects so this is the principle behind the ploidy breeding so you have to be very cautious when testing with these kinds of techniques so we will see what's next in the topic so uh, you just have to know more of the basic stuffs before going to the mainstream topic the thing is like uh, you need to know about the definition of genome properly there's been like a uh, lot of people uh, who already knew the genome but for those who don't know the meaning it's nothing but it's like the complete set of the genes or genetic material present inside the cell so this is called as genome okay so this is the first terminology associated right here and the second thing is somatic or vegetal cell so soma means body so the cell which give rise to body of the organisms it is called as somatic cells or vegetal cells so these cells do not include any gamete or germ cell or a gametocytes or any undifferentiated stem cells okay so these form a separate type of category so these cells are called as gamete cells so gamete cell as well as somatic cells so stem cells are like a different entity you don't need to discuss right now so like all the cells somatic cells also contains dna arranged in chromosomes so if the somatic cells contains chromosomes which are mainly arranged in pairs it is called as diploid and the organism is called as diploid organisms so imagine this is a cell you have nucleus inside it and you have chromatin network here so this is where the chromosomes will actually be present so if the chromosome is arranged like this that is if it is occurs in pair then it is called as diploid but in some cases only one arm of the chromosome will be present and the condition is called as haploid so this haploid is mainly seen in the gametes of the diploid organism so these contains only one single unpaired chromosomes and these are called as haploid as i told right now like uh, these like each pair of the chromosome comprises of that is the gametes of the diploid organism contains each pair of chromosomes comprising of only one chromosomes inherited from father and one inherited from mother so imagine this is like uh, so i'll tell you in detail so i'll tell i'll tell with an example so as i told earlier consider this is a soma cell so this is like father cell and this is like mother cell so inside you have nucleus inside you have nucleus so this is like diploid the arrangement is diploid okay but there's gametes it's like uh, the father gamete produces sperm which is an haploid will have only one pair and uh, for the mother you have one pair so when these two fuse that is it will result in the formation of a new cell which is 
again are deployed so one part will coming from the father another part will be coming from mother so this is how the fertilization actually takes place so this is the basis of the genetic composition that makes up the fertilization process so be clear with the concept but uh, in however large number of species have the chromosomes in the somatic cells arranged in fours or even sixes thus they can have deployed or even triploid germlines for example uh, like in the modern cultivated species be it like triticum aestivum uh, exoploid species whose so somatic cell contains six copies of every chromatid so uh, like in humans the chromosome structure will be like this so this is called as diploid but in few cases like in plant like in plants and all you'll have like triple species the structure will be like this okay and like triticum aestivum you'll have like six exoploid species like you have six chromosome structures okay like in exoploid you'll be having eight so this is how the chromatin networks is being arranged so and this forms the basis of ploidy breeding so finally thus a diploid species have two a triploid has three chromosomes and a tetraploid has four genomes and so on and the individuals who carrying chromosome number other than the diploid are known as heteroploids and the situation is called as heteroploidy okay so just remember the terms alone so these these are like very very important uh, while writing your answers so guys before knowing the difference between uh, a aneuploidy and the euploidy you just have to know a basic diagram so imagine these two circles so this is like a chromosome and this is like genome so by the definition you know that genome is nothing but the complete set of genes that represent a character okay so inside the genome you'll have chromosomes so if there is any alterations in the number of chromosome number that involves only one or few chromosomes it is called as aneuploidy okay so this is called as aneuploidy but if it involves one or more complete genome so that is if the entire outer circle changes that is the entire character itself changes uh, in one or more genomes it is called as euploidy so just know this basic diagram so if it involves genome then it is called as euploidy if it involves the chromosome numbers it is called as aneuploidy so we'll see each and everything in detail in the next topic so before going to that you just have to know how the aneuploidies and euploidies are being classified so this is like an overview classification of the aneuploid and the euploid so as i said that aneuploid always deals with the number of number of chromosomes so always it is coming with n that is 2n it is always like with n n means number of chromosomes so uh, they are classified as nullisomic monosomic double monosomic trisomic and the double tetrasomic dry tri double trisomic and tetrasomic so like uh, the details are giving here given here like uh, you, you can just go through this because it's like self explanatory and in euploid it always deals with the number of genomes or copies of the single genome more or less than 2 okay this is what i said earlier it deals with the genomes entirely and it deals with the number of chromosomes so they have been classified as uh, monoploid haploid and polyploid so like these two are like irrelevant in the plant breeding the most important thing is like polyploid so polyploid is like more than 2x that is 3x 4x 5x so this is what makes the polyploid very much interesting so like they are classified as two types one is auto polyploid that is when the genomes are identical with each other or involved and also allo polyploid that is when it has two or more distinct genomes it is called as allo polyploid so these being classified like uh, many types they based upon the number of copies that uh, each genome is added to the main organisms and uh, this is like uh, allo polyploid have two or distinct genomes so we'll cover each and uh, every topic detail in the upcoming topic so this is what the basic overlay or basic uh, classification of ploids that is aneuploid and euploid so that puts end to today's topic i hope you guys enjoy the topic so this is like the foundation stone for the polyploid breeding so without knowing these basics it is very really highly improbable to understand the concepts of ploidy breeding so guys we'll see you in the next lecture so do, so finally do subscribe to our channel support us and comment us so because the support i've been receiving is like very lukewarm so anyway thanks for the support i've been receiving we'll see you in the next lecture goodbye